Okay. Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, thank you Robert and the WordPress user group for inviting me today. So, um, just a quick sharing. Today's uh, SEO WordPress talk will be mostly SEO. So roughly, what is SEO about? Um, what, are, what is on-site SEO? What is off-site SEO? What are the basics of SEO? And what you should take note of? Then afterwards, I will touch on a little bit of how I would use WordPress to actually perform my SEO work because most of my, my clients and most people actually build their websites on the WordPress base. So later on, uh, near the end of the presentation, I'll talk about, about, about use uh, by SEO plugin. And okay, so a quick introduction. Myself, I'm Tommy. Okay, I've been doing SEO for the past about five years and I actually run SEO gig uh, private limited. If you all try to search on Google right now, it's, a, it's actually down. I actually put the website on construction because I'm trying to do some revamping and rebranding. So the website is down, but uh, it'll be up soon. So if you have any questions or anything going forward, you can drop me an email. Later on at the end of the presentation, I'll have my email. You can ask me any questions if you have. Okay, so just a quick outline. Roughly what is SEO? I assume most of you over here have a minimal understanding of SEO or basic. If you guys are professionals, then this will be boring to you. So hopefully no professionals around. Okay, so a quick introduction about the history of SEO, how it came about, uh, what, what is it about? Okay, on-site SEO, which is what you could do on a WordPress site. Off-site SEO, what you could do to do link building, how to send links towards your your website and why, why are links relevant? I'll, I'll talk about it. And use SEO plugin for WordPress. Okay, so if you guys are uh, wondering what is search engine optimization, so you hear about SEO a lot, you hear about, you know, you guys need to do your SEO for your Shopify website when you want to sell something. You do SEO so they can rank on Google. So basically, SEO is just a process uh, where people like myself, SEOs, we do certain things behind the background to actually affect the visibility of a website. So basically to rank your websites into uh, what, what will be the most profitable for most people which is first page or second page of Google. Okay, so, uh, and they will basically call this what they call natural organic results page. So as you can see over here, <coughs> you know, all these are ads, 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 all these on the sites are ads and over here are what we call organic results. So this is what this is where uh, people like us we try to create uh, ranking opportunities for, for for websites to actually rank in, in in these three sections over here. So as you guys know, if you are uh, frequent users of Google, each uh, page on Google actually has about ten results, about ten to about twelve results most of the time. So, yep. So quick introduction to search engines. You guys understand there's Google, there's Yahoo, there's Bing, and we all know Google is a big winner. Google owns about 70% of the whole market. Right now, because of the decreasing market size, Yahoo and Bing has kind of merged their results. So actually when you search on Yahoo and Bing, the results are kind of the same because they are actually sharing the same uh, platform right now. So, okay, yeah. so Later on, I'll be focusing more on. Okay, I'll try not to walk around. I'll, I'll just stay here. I think the. Uh, can I can I can I uh postpone all the questions to the to the end? Then we just will ask questions one go. Yeah, then easier for me. If not, I'll be cut off on in between. Yeah. So, um. Okay, where was I? Okay, so. Google right now owns about 70% of the local market and, and I'll be sharing more on Google SEO. La. That'll be the bigger part of these things. So how does search engines actually work? Okay, I will do a quick introduction and quick explanation of how it works. So when you, when you actually build a website, okay, uh, we all know the, the, the whole World Wide Web, it's called you know, the internet is actually called the World Wide Web and, and there's a reason why it is called the World Wide Web because all websites are kind of interconnected. Okay, so for example, my website with Robert's website, with person A's, person B's website, there is some kind of interconnection between us. So for example, I, you know, when I was younger, I had a blog 
Blogspot page. I don't know whether you guys have it. I will go to a Blogspot page. I will write some articles and I'll talk about my day. You know, I went to school today and my teacher punished me for for whatever reasons. Then on my websites, I actually put on my blog row. You know, my best friend's blog row. So this is my favorite artist. This is my favorite singer. And and because of all these links that I actually send. To the other websites, to the other friends or the other uh, artists or the other actor, this interconnects me, my blogspot, with someone else's website and someone else's website. So what happens is, uh, in the past, uh, when you know when things were younger, the internet was younger, uh, a lot of <coughs> search engines came about. But a lot of these search engines are actually just listicles, like they are like kind of like glorified yellow pages. So people just pay. Go in. You can search for, say, a, a videographer. If you search for a videographer, then you have all the different videographers being listed. They are mostly list listicles. So what Google wanted to create was not a list. They wanted to create something that is living, something that that changes and moves. So what they did was to come up with Google spiders. Okay. So what the spiders would do is actually to go through different websites and find information and move from site to site. So think of it like a web, a spider web, where they crawl from one page to the second page to the third page to the fourth page. Okay. So if you can look at this animation, so just now I was talking about Blogspot. So for example, Google Spider starts off coming to Tommy Cole's Blogspot today. Okay. So when it comes in and it finds Robert is my best friend. Yeah. Okay. The link goes over to Robert and it goes over to Robert. Robert is best friend with someone else and he goes over and over and over. So until the spider hits. A, a web page where there there is no more links, so he will meet a dead end, and the spider kind of just stops moving from there. But if there is a link, the links will just flow around. So, uh, basically, search spiders run through the web from one page to a page. When they go through the page at the same time, they keep a record of this information of what they see on the web page. So when you go into a web page. Uh, most of the time, uh, search engines people will always tell you try not to use uh, too many animations on your website. You know, if I'm an SEO, I'll tell you try not to do any animations. Try to focus more on images. Try to focus more on words because search spiders like such things. Search spiders likes words because they use words as information for them to do on-site uh, optimization. Okay, and at the same time, images can also have alternative uh, text behind it. So. I will explain more about that later on. Okay, and the last thing. So once the search engine spiders picked up the information, recorded the information, they will use this information to create the search engine result pages so that you know they can give you guys the best best searches. So for example, you're looking for the best videographer, the best photographer, uh, the best uh, analytics person, then these results will come up based on what you want to look for. Okay, so roughly what a uh, search engine is. So I will explain to you roughly what Google is trying to come up with. Yahoo has a similar kind of platform, Baidu somewhat similar as well. But uh, what made Google different at the start was actually what they had, uh, which is what they call the page rank. Okay, so it was a different kind of concept at the start when when Google came up with it. So it's called page rank. Also, because Larry Page, which is the co-founder, is actually yeah using his name as Page Rank. So, if you guys are wondering, so Page Rank basically it is a quantity, uh, a number actually defined uh, by I think anyway this 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 sentence was actually picked up from from Wikipedia. So, yeah, so it's just a definition. But roughly explaining to you guys what it means, uh, each website is assigned a ranking from zero to ten. Okay. So zero being the lowest ranking website. If I start a blog spot page today to talk about my life today, it will start at zero. Okay, and of course, some website that is that is very popular, uh, for example, Facebook.com would have been assigned a face uh, a page rank ten. Okay, uh, why I'm talking about this is I want to explain to you guys what uh, Google is about and what page rank is about. But just to let you guys know, page rank numbers. No longer uh, are, are displayed to to people like us anymore because there was some there's some reason behind it. I'll explain to you guys later. So using this formula, they come up with some form of uh, ranking. So how it roughly works, huh? In a very layman way to explain. Okay, think of yourself uh, voting for okay democracy, right? So 
think of yourself voting for a president. Okay. Um, so each yeah, of us, huh? uh, let's be let's be politically correct here. I'm not gonna point at anything. So, so basically, each of you have a vote over here. Okay. So each of you votes. So each of you are basically sending a link to someone else. Basically, you're voting for someone else because you would only link to someone that you trust. You will only link to someone that you like. You wouldn't want to link to someone that 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 you know is your enemy. So so how Google does it is. By, by linking to someone else, myself linking to Robert, Robert linking to someone else, you're kind of endorsing this website. Okay? So how page rank function was basically, if you have a lot of page rank zero or page rank one websites, if you actually link them towards somebody, this guy gets a higher page rank because he is important. Why would 100 people be voting for him when he is not important, right? So if you have you are you are someone you're like an influencer, you have hundred people following you or hundred thousand people following your Instagram. Same concept. So when a lot of people link towards you, you are in theory a more important site and therefore assign a higher page rank. Okay, and but there are a lot more uh, things behind behind the algorithm. But this is a very layman way of explaining how uh, page rank and how Google actually works. So with this assignment of of importance, you know, when, when different people link up, when this guy with three votes, one, two, three more, this guy gets six votes, this guy is page rank three, this guy is two, this is one, for example. So this is roughly how uh, page rank actually works. Okay. So this is page rank. Okay? The other thing, this is what I call SERPs, which is the search engine result pages. Okay. Page rank is a number. Page rank is a number assigned to your website. Okay? I can be a page rank five, but that doesn't mean that I will rank in the search engine pages. It's not the same thing. So I might be a very popular site, but I might not rank because there are various different ways that Google <coughs> actually assigns their ranking results. Okay, so just now I said SERPs, so search engine result pages. So it's not the same. Uh, because the SERPs are actually determined by a number of signals, so which includes page rank one of them, okay? uh, the number of links coming to your website. Okay? If, you, if, of course, you are, you are getting uh, links from a high page rank source, for example, like just now I said, page rank zero is my blogspot page. Facebook, Apple, Microsoft will be a page rank 10. Okay? Uh, maybe singaporegovernment.sg. Uh, mom.gov.sg might be a page rank 8 because it, people link to MOM, right? MOM is an is a important site. So who links to me matters, okay? How many links I get from each uh, website matters, okay? How fast you get the links, okay? So uh, later on, I'll talk about off-site SEO, but basically the speed that you accumulate these links will also affect how well you rank uh, in the search engine result pages. So, for example, you start your website today, okay, and, and you realize, you know, why not I get all my friends to link to me today? You know, I get all my hundred friends and link to me today. Google, on the other end, will realize, you know, something is funny. You know, this guy is trying to to doctor my my results. He's trying to be funny with me. So I will not let you rank. Okay, I might even maybe will let you rank in in the near future, but I'll postpone your ranking because. You are not supposed to do it. You know, by right, anyone who has a good website, you are supposed to accumulate links slowly. You know, people like things to be slow and steady, and not you know at the start of the day, boom, one hundred links. Then the next day, I, I get another one thousand friends to link at me, another one thousand. So accumulation of the links should be slow. If you are a new website, you slowly gain the links. If you are a five year old domain, it's a, it's a, it's okay for a five year old domain to get hundred links in one day, but it's not okay for a, for a one day old to get to get hundred links. Okay. The type of links that you get, okay, so later on I'll share with you what are the different type of links, but just a quick uh, uh, understanding, you know, uh, when, you, when you build a blog, for example, a WordPress blog, a uh, blogspot blog, that's, uh, that's what I call blog links. If you have like a social media page, Instagram, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter account, that's uh, uh, what we call uh, social media pages. And you have forum pages, so maybe you go to SG forum, you get a SG car forum. That's a forum page. So these are different types of links as well. So if I write a blog post and within my my five hundred word blog post, I put a link. That's contextual links. So these are different types of links, which I'll share later on. Okay, and in the end, the content of the website. Okay, so quick thing. 
So just now, actually, I already roughly touched on some of the, the parts of on-site SEO. So most people, if you all meet SEOs, they will always say that, you know, content is king because on-site SEO takes advantage of the content of your website to allow you to rank. Okay, so let me explain what I mean by content of the website. Okay, so when you come up with a web page, you need to have content that is relevant, I will, I will emphasize the word relevant, to what you want to rank for, okay? So, for example, I want to rank uh, for SEO, okay? If I want to rank for SEO, I would have to have the word SEO in my website, okay? I can't be talking about Robert, 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 or I can't be talking about Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft. If my whole website front page, my meta title, <coughs> my meta descriptions, my content, my information inside is all about Microsoft. I will not rank for SEO. So there is one major, major thing. So it must be relevant to what you want to look for. So as you can see over here, like, like I talked about SEO, having your title, this, so this is what we call a meta title. Okay, so if I want to rank for SEO, you should be talking about SEO, beginner's guide to search engine optimization. Okay, then inside your description again, SEO comes up. Inside your link, SEO comes out again. So the keyword that you want to rank for must appear within your content. And this is a rough idea of what on-site uh, SEO about, is about. So I, I do not have a lot of time to share today. So I'm limited to probably about 20 over minutes and, and still, still have a Q&A. So uh, I'll share a little bit more later on. So this is roughly what on-site is about. Okay, so I was sharing. Content is a uh, signal through the use of keywords. So just now the keyword that I was showing you over here is the keyword SEO. So you see SEO is repeated once, twice, four times. Okay, this is to signal uh, that you want to use this keyword and this is what you want to rank for. So meta title is one of the places to put your, your keywords. Your meta description is one of the places. And why I say, uh, Google likes websites with images. Google likes websites with a lot of words and not animations flying around and, and little words because images also have odd text behind. So they are alternate text. So if you, if you are a coder or you know how it works, you can actually insert odd, odd text behind images and basically let the keyword SEO appear another time. Okay, and your content itself. Yeah, okay. So just a rough idea as to Google Panda. Uh, okay, actually Google Panda came about, if I don't remember, only 2012. Okay, so Google Panda came about partly because pre-2012, the whole Google was like a wild west. So what happened was people who wanted to rank, we all know that if you rank number one on Google, somehow all of us trust the number one on Google. I don't know why, because you, you see the ads and somehow, I, I, for myself, when I see ads on Google, I, I kind of have like a self-filter and I filter the, the ads and I go to the first three results of Google. I don't know about you guys, but that's, that's how I, I do it. So when I go to the first three results, I, I kind of think that, you know, these guys are like the holy grail of the whatever I'm searching for. So, so when I click on this, oh, okay, this is, this is it, this is it. So what a lot of people did was, they realized that, you know, having all these keywords inside their website will help them rank. So they swam the whole website with just that, ex that particular keyword that they wanted to rank for. So for example, if I want to rank for SEO, you went into the website and you see nothing but the word SEO, 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 SEO around the whole place. This is a, a, a dramatization of what I'm trying to put out, but basically there were people who just created websites with spam, with spam of the use of many on-site uh, <coughs> keywords usages, and this caused uh, Google to return results to people like us, the users of Google, with very poor quality websites. And this is what Google doesn't want because Google wants people to come to their, their, their google.com to, to use their website, to use search for things and to return good results. So because of that, Google Panda came about. So a rough idea, Google Panda basically eliminates spam of low quality websites. Okay, so low quality websites are basically <coughs> people who over spam. Okay, they, they put your keywords everywhere and, and you duplicate content. So, for example, I, I read an article written by, by, by Tommy today and I realized I want to rank for SEO too. So I copy Tommy's article, I paste the article onto my website 
and it's mine. You know, I might, they might not get caught for copyright reasons, but Google will catch them for duplicate reasons. Because when you duplicate, you're not adding value to, the, to Google, you're not adding value to people, and therefore, Google penalizes you. So that's one other <coughs> thing. So low quality content, when you write blog posts, if your blog post only has 100 words, it's no, there's no value to, to the world, it's no value to Google. So when you write blog posts, you should have at least four to 500 words. Okay, so this is what Google Panda algorithm, so it is actually in, embedded into the algorithms of Google so that the results do not show up low quality stuff. Yep, okay, so this is a quick understanding of what on-site optimization is about. Okay, so off-site SEO. So just now I was telling you guys about search engine spiders, okay? So linking matters the most to Google uh, because that was how it formed the basis of how they, it became one of the best search engines uh, in the world. So they had a formula to, to come up with content that was the best, uh, the results that were the best in terms of relevance to, to, to people like you and me, okay? So, like people say content is king, but I would say links actually contribute to about 60-70%. Okay, different SEOs have different point of view. Myself personally, I still think 60-70% of the ranking results actually depend on where you get your links, how you get your links, how fast you get your links. So links matters a lot still. Okay, so where it comes from, okay, so you are getting links from, from various locations. Most people, legit SEOs, what we call whiteheads, would do our link building ourselves. So myself, if I have a client, I will go to some uh, blog sharing pages and I'll write a content, you know, 500 words, I'll type, you know, why is Robert the best person to talk about analytics today, okay? And, and I will link to him and I will, I will build links manually, slowly and organically. The keyword is organically, okay? So um, the use of anchor text. So for example, when I send a link to someone else, Sometimes you see the link can be, you know, in blue, it can be <coughs> click here, or it can be visit this site. So these words that you use is actually what we term the anchor text, okay? And then the URL that directs you to the website is the anchor URL. So the use of your anchor text matters as well, okay? If all your links that is coming into your website is all uh, SEO, for example, if all the links coming to me is about is SEO, 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 and it's just one term, okay? Then Google will penalize you. Why? Because you are trying to be funny. Because if you have hundred links linking to you, why would every single person link to you as SEO? It's like someone might know me as as an SEO person, but someone might know me as a classmate. Someone might know me as a as a schoolmate or or you know a sportsmate. Why would why would everyone know me as SEO? Something is wrong there. So there is a diversification in the anchor text that you use, and yeah, I will explain a little bit more. Uh, I don't have too much time over here, so this is roughly what it is. So Google Penguin. So just now we had Panda. So Penguin came about 2013, okay, and it basically tries to penalize people who are basically doing keyword stuffing. So just now I said all the keywords are SEO, SEO, SEO. Okay, they are over optimized. So when you over optimize. When everyone links to you as one keyword, Google Penguin tries to penalize that. Okay, it looks unnatural. So if in one day you get 10,000 links, in two day, in the second day you get another 10,000 links, something is wrong with you. You definitely bought the links. Okay, or, or you are getting uh, links that are, they are just variations of one keywords. They, they, will, they will actually have some penalization. So link schemes are things like, you know, for example, I might own a few blocks myself. And, I, and it's 10 years old, okay? And yeah, because of the age and because of people linking to me, wow, I have a very powerful uh, link base, what, what I would call a link base. So, so because of that, I start selling links, okay? So for example, if, if you're gonna, you're gonna, you want to rank for, for a certain keyword, just tell me, you know, Tommy, can you write an article for me and, I, and, I, and, and, and link up to you as this certain anchor text and a certain anchor URL, and naturally you will rank. And this is what Google doesn't want because they want their results to be natural. So when you try to doctor and buy such links, this is what they call link schemes. So you're trying to use a scheme or you trade links in a certain manner and, and yeah, link schemes are what they don't want. So because of that, Penguin came about, 
uh, Penguin penalized a lot of people on their websites and rankings change and people now have to do their SEO posts uh, Penguin in a certain manner. Okay, so just now I was talking about sources of links. So forums, profile pages, social media, social bookmarking, blog sites, um, Mm, document sharing sites, uh, infographic sites, uh, research white paper, uh, even even PR articles that you write to a certain website, and this PR page actually distributes your 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 press release. You know, press releases also can have an anchor URL. So these are some places to get links. Uh, in the past. Pre penguin comment marketing is very popular. So if you guys own WordPress sites, definitely bots will come to your sites and start saying, "Oh, you should you should look at this page. It is awesome." Then the link over here. Yeah, this is spam. And 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 if you do not have like a filter to basically filter off all these spam comments, it will appear on your site. So you are unknowingly endorsing another site. Yeah, because it spams your it spams your comment. So always remember if you are using WordPress, always have a have a comment or uh, what do you call it basically filtering process where you filter on all the, on the comments and if you really want to endorse someone then you agree to 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 showing the comments to the world if not delete that the comment it might it might do harm to your website instead in terms of SEO yeah so online video YouTube Vimeo you can put links over there there's value in it yeah okay so that's on site off-site so a quick relevance to WordPress okay so just now I was telling you guys uh, what to do on-site so Yoast SEO actually does a lot more on on-site SEO than off-site so um, why I would recommend this plugin is because it's very easy to use once you download this this is the name of the, the plugin if you guys are using WordPress and it's very easy to use and it basically helps you hone your on-site SEO skills in a very fast manner because uh, you would just very easily you just have to put your focus keyword inside so for example in this situation the focus keyword is WordPress SEO plugin okay so I want to rank for WordPress SEO plugin so when I put this focus keyword in it will give you a suggestion okay so is this keyword in your article heading okay so it is in my article heading yes okay turns green Okay, page title, is it in my page title? Yes. Okay, is it in your page URL? No, because it doesn't say yours.com uh, uh, site slash uh, WordPress SEO plugin. It doesn't say that. If it says that, it will turn into yes. Content, does this keyword come in, come in your, your article 10 times, 5 times, 15 times? Okay, uh, the number of times uh, it should appear in your content depends on how long your article is. Okay, there is a magic number to it. Yeah. <coughs> so, and meta descriptions. So this is what we call the meta description. So is it appearing in your meta description? So it's yes, twice. So twice. So it basically helps you to to uh, forces you to make sure that you are doing your on-site properly. Okay. And remotely, you can also use this plugin to adjust page by page, because this is all the way below when you when you actually do a page or a, a post in in WordPress. So all the way below you can see you can edit page by page your SEO titles and your meta descriptions okay this is the, the the favorite part that I like about it so for example if it's if it's green means well done good job you know you've done a good thing so your title is more than 40 characters perfect it's lesser than 70 so the maximum limit for Google's results is 70 okay so anywhere below 40 they think you are wasting wasting real estate you know you should maximize your real estate so a good number is between 40 and 70 characters okay so in your in your content you should have a minimum of 300 words to be a good article so you have 976 good okay the meta description in the meta de description uh okay this one's useless okay page title is it in page title the keyword how 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 many times does it appear does it appear in the subheadings you know or uh, does it appear in the first paragraph? Does it appear in your alt text? And <coughs> are your articles easy for humans to read? You know, yeah, things like this. So, so it will give you the suggestions to help you improve your on-site SEO. Yep. Okay. So that's really roughly it. It's a uh, very quick. I have a very limited time, twenty-five minutes or or twenty minutes of presentation. So actually, I am gonna do some uh, some 
publicity for myself. Okay, so I will be conducting some uh, SEO classes going forward. So on the 29th of April, uh, I actually am going to conduct a class uh, at Peninsula Plaza. It'll be a full day's course, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. If you're interested to find out more, you can drop me an email, tommyksh at seogeek.sg. Okay, this is my contact number if you guys are interested. Yeah, by, I, I should have shared a website, but my website is not ready yet. So uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, uh, I think we can open the floor to some questions. And, and yep, thank you very much. Just nice, 30 minutes. Okay, yes. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, how, how, many, how much percent roughly they have? Uh, I am not very familiar with Baidu because it's not very popular in Singapore actually. But uh, mm. you know, could we use the same mm -mm. type of uh, SEO type of technique on it? Or mm. totally different angle altogether? I'm not very familiar. Leh. I, don't, I don't play around with Baidu because it's a slightly different. Like for example, if you want to rank in Baidu, from what I understand, you need to have a .com .cn website. And, and they will have a higher, way higher chance to rank in Baidu than than, than if you have a .com website, from my understanding, yeah. But for example, you wanna get a .com .cn, you need to have a business in, in registered in China itself, yeah. So I'm not too familiar. I haven't had a chance to register my .com .cn. So when I have done that, maybe I can share it with you. Not too familiar with I too. Yeah, no problem. <coughs> Any questions? Yes. There's a link command that you can check mm. externally, but that link command is no longer valid. What do you mean by link command? You, you mm -mm. the mm -mm. Uh, search. Link and, uh, mm. your website okay. www.seo.com uh, yeah. mm. <coughs> I if my understanding you can't really search who links to you uh, you could if, if people are linking to you in what we call uh, raw URL which is which is like that, okay? If people are linking to you like that, actually you put an open inverted comma on Google, you could probably dig out some information on whether people are linking to you as, as per your raw URL. But if you are looking at people linking to you, there are a few websites that you can go to, okay? Places like uh, <coughs> Majestic SEO, places like uh, ahrefs.com, okay? Uh, Moss.com. There are a few websites that run uh, they are, they are kind of like search engine themselves. They are basically crawling the internet and trying to find who is linking to who and who's getting more links and who, who is more popular. So um, I don't think there is a function where you can search who links to you. I don't, I'm, I'm not too familiar whether there are, but I usually use all these tools to go and check and find out, you know, for example, my clients' websites, uh, whether they are, they are ranking, they are, they are getting links from weird places or where, where they are getting links from, then I can see whether it is working and I use <coughs> mostly Majestic and, and Moss, yeah. Come. Right. Uh, the, 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 uh, I would say keyword-based SEO is not as effective like you said. Um, basically, phrases, most people are starting to search in phrases, you know, where can I find the best uh, cha kway tiao in town? Okay, where can I find uh, the best place to drink? You know, so, so um, if you ask me whether, whether doing still linking Anchor keywords and yeah. I, I believe yeah, yeah. Google algorithm has also changed, right? They are now using yes. NLP and not just keywords. So, what is the NLP statement I should use to make sure my landing is the correct? I wouldn't say linking as purely in anchor text do not work anymore. Actually, it still does. Uh, for example, if I want to link to to the best bar in Singapore, for example, if I link to him, it still affects the the rankings. But of course, not as much as in the past. Um, but yes, linking uh, in terms of keywords wise, you could also take advantage of instead of 
linking to them as best bar in Singapore, you could still link up as where do you find the best bar in Singapore. It actually affects the ranking. Keyword by keyword ranking still works. And end of the day, uh, on-site SEO. So if you want to, if, if people are searching in such languages, make sure your content has such languages in it. So, so when you're writing your articles, you have to kind of train yourself to have a muscle memory where you need to sometimes think of SEO. So, you know, so where can I find the best bar in Singapore? Question mark. Then you start talking again. So you talk in first person, second person, first person, second person, and you have to have the keywords inside. Yeah, but I, 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 I get what I mean. But it still, it still affects. It still affects. It still ranks, but uh, not as much as in the past. Yeah. And it's getting <coughs> harder and harder. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder. Yeah. Which are the SEO tools that you subscribe to? Mm, to check rankings or to check backlinks or what kind of? <coughs> okay, for example, backlinks, I use Majestic, I use Moss, uh, Ahrefs, and actually there's this open link profiler. Actually, these are nice uh, <coughs> places to check your links. Then if you're talking about checking rankings for my clients, I, I use this uh, software called Rank Tracker. It's quite nice. So you actually put, it, put in the <coughs> necessary keywords then um, then you, you put in which search engine you want to check for. So it allows you to search for Google, Yahoo, Bing, and it gives you the, the ranking results. Yeah, so, so if you are someone who wants to look at your results every single day, yeah, you could use, you could use Rank Tracker. It's a, it's a, it's a free tool. Uh, you can't save the results uh, if you don't pay for it. But if you pay for it, you can see your results every single day and you feel good about yourself that your ranking is increasing. Yeah. Uh, okay, you first. You mentioned you revamped uh. your website, right? so will uh -uh. it affect your ranking? Yes, definitely. So, uh, depending on how fast my website loads, that's one met one 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 of the algorithm uh, calculations. So, how this new site allows me to have more content, so I can write more words on my front page. Correct. You definitely, you definitely, it will, it will. So right now, actually, I am on the second page for SEO <coughs> service. So if you Google SEO specialist, I'm actually on the first page. But if I actually put it on construction for a while, it will disappear for a while. So if I, I have to get it back within the next few days because Google doesn't update its, its things so fast. It's not like every day Google comes in and, and keep looking at your site every day. You know, they, they, they come in once every two or three days. Sometimes certain websites, the, the spiders come in once a week. They update their, their website once a week. So within this period of time, if I can get the website up fast enough, then you will not have, have my results. But if I let this whole construction thing last for two, three weeks, yes, it will, it will affect my rankings. Yeah. There's no even a question. Yeah. Uh, on the blog side, you can type mm. four, five hundred words easily. Correct. Correct. But if you are on the e-commerce side, a single mm. product, and most can write maybe 50 to 100 mm. words, and always the ranking show you a rate button. Mm. And Yep. Nearly every product, yep. Price yep. Price, yep. Price, yep. Yep. I think I think as long as you are able to put in okay, for example, you are selling a, a shoe. Okay, so at least the keyword shoe must be in the title descriptions and if possible within the description twice. Then I would say also within your URL. So this tree actually is strong enough on site uh so on-site signals to them already. About, I would say 60-70% of the on-site signals come from these three things. Content, yes, uh, as much as possible. If you can squeeze in a few times, shoo, 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 yeah, then it, it will help. But I would say do not bother too much about the number of words or number of times it can appear. But most importantly, optimize your title, optimize your description, and optimize your URL. These three makes up 70% of on-site SEO, I would, I, from my personal experience. Yeah. Uh, okay, the guy in black. Yes. 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 Oh. Yeah. So, uh, in my training, I will talk about Keyword Planner. So, Keyword Planner is actually a free uh, platform for, for people who want to use Google. But you have to have an AdWords account to actually go into Keyword Planner. Now, in the past, Keyword Planner, anyone with a Google account, a Gmail account, you can actually go in and, and do a keyword research. So what Keyword Planner does is you <coughs> enter the certain keywords. Uh, it will show you how often this keyword is searched on Google in Singapore, for example. So if you actually change it to US. So if you, okay, since, since it's Singapore, Singapore, and if you type, uh, say, photographer, okay, the photographer keyword is searched 3,000 to 4,000 times a month. 
So can you imagine 4,000 times a month? Maybe 10%, 300 of them are real customers. And if you're able to close another just 10% of that, you'll be making lots of money. That's why everyone wants to rank for high value keywords. Yeah. So yes, Keyword Planner is a good thing. You guys can go back and do a <coughs> bit of research. You must have an AdWord account uh, before they allow you to show it. And now they don't show you the exact amount of searches. They show you 10 to 100. 100 to 500, 500 to 1,000. It makes you guess roughly how much searches there are already. Plus, they used to be exact like 60 searches a month on average, 70 searches. They used to be very accurate. Google wants to, Google wants you to advertise with them. Like they don't want you to do SEO. Yeah, they make money from, I make money from SEO. They make money from AdWords, yeah. Any questions? Uh, again? M. What's? Accelerated mobile pages. Oh, no, I don't. Your domain uh, is mm. not SG. Yep. Is, is it uh, put you in disadvantaged position? Good question. Platform? Good question. Okay. If you are thinking of going global and, and you want to rank globally, of course, having a .com site is always the best. Okay. But specifically, I want to rank my <coughs> website in Singapore. Okay. So there's a reason why I chose .sg. So uh, having .sg actually does improve your your rankings if you want to rank in Singapore. It does have a, a small uh, difference. And even the, the URL that you use, there's a reason why SEO, I mean, this is my brand, but having the keyword uh, exact matches in my own URL itself also does improve to a very minute <coughs> uh, extent nowadays. Uh, in the past, yes, during the Wild West period, that's why people basically call themselves uh, SEO, I don't want to name any competitors. SEO provider.sg, for example. Yeah, so if you Google SEO, there's no SEO, yeah, there's no SEO provider. <laughs> SEO provider, then this person will appear, higher chance of appearing for that keyword because they, Google thinks that you are looking for this guy. And, and normally, if you search your own brand, you will most likely be ranking higher than the rest because this is your own brand. Same thing, your exact match would actually work a lot better. Mm. Just curiosity, uh, who owns the SEOGeek.com now? You own it or? No, I don't. I don't. SEOGeek.com <coughs> is owned by someone in the US. Okay, so but I'm the only one in Singapore. So if they, uh, if mm. they go uh, uh, competition with you, of course they will be ranked uh, higher than you. Right? In terms of Singapore ranking, if I am able to do it well, uh, there is a chance that, uh, I mean, if they are way better SEOs than me, because end of the day, SEO is not just how much you can do on site. On site is is a there's a limited amount of, like 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 just now I was suggesting for, for uh e-commerce right. There's a limited space, limited real estate where I can do my on site, but off site these people can be getting links from big sites, from CNN for example. They are featured on the news and they get links on CNN, BBC, and all those kind of things. So of course they have a higher chance of ranking. But if you want to talk about international competition wise. Having the SG gives me a higher presence here, but there is a chance, yes, like you said, there is a chance if they are the dot com, they could still rank. If you go Google SEO, yeah, they could still rank, yeah. I'm going to that uh, if you have a lot of search results, you can rank higher than the Facebook and Instagram, and then does it all disconnect you thinking you can have to? Okay, uh, partly true, partly untrue. So, like I said, you have to have a diverse base of links. So having many social media sites is good. Because not just, because we shouldn't think of doing SEO just because I want to rank on Google. Having more social media sites would also mean that when I go to Facebook and I search for SEO, there's a chance my link will come out. When I go to Twitter and I type SEO into the search bar, it will turn out too. So there is a chance that incidentally you get <coughs> leads and sales from, from having your presence there. But I would say uh, purely just for SEO's sake, uh, it's good to have more, but it's not just the only thing because social media websites are just part of actually Google has up to 200 over signals. So, and, and the funny thing about Google is every week they actually change the signals that they use for the ranking. So this week I might want to consider 50 signals 
the next week I might consider 30 out of the 200 the next week I another another 60 so social media uh, might you might have a lot of social media site this week you might rank a bit better next week you might not and the week after suddenly you are, you are doing well again because the, the algorithms keep using different marks so that different people get to rank as well so those who really went well on the first page, they have a strong presence everywhere. Social media, forums, blogs, news articles, press release sites, everything. They have a strong presence on the ground. And when you have a strong support on the ground, you, you, are, you are a good website. Lah. So uh, part of uh, using the analytic tool, I mean the yep. tools that you are using you know, uh, mm. to uh, analyze the mm. Mm -mm. Uh, apart from that, uh, how long you can see the results uh, uh, appear? Mm -mm. Maybe evaluate the results that you can mm -mm. Uh, How long it takes to see yeah. results? Sometimes it really depends. Um, because if, for example, if it's a client site, if they are competing with someone else, you must understand that. <coughs> It's like, it's like selling something. You are selling something, someone is selling something. So you have a SEO, someone has a SEO at the same time. So I might be doing 10 things right, he might be doing 10 things right. In the end, we are still competing. So it, it depends on how competitive that keyword is. Okay, so if you are touching uh, uh, maybe uh, yeah, like a meat supplier, you know, meat suppliers, how many meat suppliers are there in Singapore? So even optimize for this keyword is easy. Okay, and, 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 but if you are going to compete and do skincare, for example, yeah, you're fighting with Sephora and who's not, then that will be very, very tough on you. So how fast you see results really depends on competition. And the second thing is actually, uh, based on experience, I realized uh, if you do build links across the week, most of the results do not get updated until the end of the week. Uh, I realized, uh, based on, I, I always realize between Sunday and Monday, Google ranking changes a little bit. And, and it, it's during the, maybe it's a downtime of their server, so they will do their updates. But it's not every time. Nowadays, because there's a new update in Google uh, Penguin, they actually did an uh, update in Google Penguin last year. So right now, penalizing, okay, Google Penguin in the past used to penalize on a certain date. So December 2013, Google Penguin came out, you get penalized, you are a spammer. You want to get out of, of, of the spammers list, you know, like a like like Santa Claus naughty list. So if you want to get out of the list, you do your things right and you submit to Google and say, please reconsider me again. Then there is a chance at the next update you get calculated and, and yeah, you can do well and you get ranked again. But now it's on the go. Penguin has came into the base of SEO's algorithm, uh, Google's algorithm, and we basically it is an undergo thing. So it really depends. How well you do it, how fast you do it, it the results do not come instantly so, now. I believe because you provide SEO mm, services, correct. so uh, they will have clients like uh, mm. to say, yep. I want to rank number one in Google. So yep, of course. How, how do you answer the kind of questions? Like, you know, because they are not <laughs> Good question. So normally, what people in my industry will tell their customers three to six months. Because if you are, most people come in, they are bare basics. They have no links built to them. They are on-site SEO is bad. Everything is just basically from ground zero. So a good time frame is about three to six months where I could go on-site and make changes to the websites and at the same time, start building links. So like I said, I, I like to go to art, article sites and start writing. You know, if I want to send you a link, I can say that you know you are my customer from SEO Gig. If SEO Gig has a good page rank, what I will do is you are my customer. Yeah, you get one link. You see, so there are various ways to get links, but it takes time, and I don't want to do it too fast. You no know, brand new website, slowly ten five links a day, slowly build, 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 build across time. Three to six months is a good time frame, but depending on how competitive, certain keywords nine months. Mm. So throughout the, the mm. uh, three to six months, mm. nine months, mm. there will be. Optimizing yes, right? yes, correct. Okay. So, so even one shot mm, done <coughs> correct, correct. And also because, uh, like like uh, the, the guy beside you just now, you also want to write articles that will give you more chances to link. So I will always advise my customer again find a good copywriter, 
go and write blogs. Go and write blogs. Write about your topic. If you are if you are someone who is talking, you are a food blogger, write about all kinds of food in Singapore because that gives you a higher chance of exposure. When people, when you get higher chance of exposure, more people will want to link to you naturally. What Google wants is not people like myself to come into the picture. You know, people. What Google wants is you to get natural endorsements. So if you think this food blogger is good, you write it in your blog. Oh, this food blogger really is good. What he recommends is true. Then he gets a link. So you have by having more content, you you have a higher chance of reaching out to real users who wants to link to you. You're talking about outbound inbound yeah. links. How about outbound links? Do you okay. To one hundred web page. Is there any point even? Mm, yeah, of course. You, when you link out to people, there is there is a point. And if you link out to too many people, the point value depreciates. You see, if I got mm. 1,000 customers, yep. naturally I can link to a customer web page. Say I got 1,000 links, I link straight away. Mm -hmm. and can I do that? Is it, yeah, 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 you could. You, could. you, 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 you will not be penalized, but in the end, your link might not have any value. Yeah. You know, when I might get 1,000 votes, but I 1,000 vote up to everyone again, then it might not have any. <coughs> yeah, it depreciates as well. Yeah. Just now, just now. Uh, do you compare the different mm. SEO markets? I am very focused on, on your SEO. Like. Your SEO. Your SEO. <coughs> I haven't really <coughs> tried the rest, but I am very focused on this plugin itself. Yeah, well, I am very focused on basically this. Basically, if you are uh, not getting someone to build your site custom at an enterprise level, you should just use yours. Yeah. It's uh, probably the best, right? Uh, other plugins might come closer, but they're not as maintained <coughs> as, uh, as, as it is with yours. I actually know yours, and uh, he's actually a really good way at, uh, at SEO itself. So, whenever he builds plugin, he's anticipating what Google is doing, he knows uh, uh, what's the new update. Uh, and and uh, his team is so focused on the UX uh, to the point where he just basically follow the instructions and, and uh, according to the point system uh, and fill in the details. Yeah, so I, if you're not going at an enterprise level, basically it's just use yours. Yeah. Yeah, the reason why I've got multiple focused keywords that if you have two mm -hmm. focused keywords, but it doesn't tally with your page title and then it turns rates against the yeah. Mm -hmm. so yeah. That takes time. Yeah, quite irritating. So, should we use multiple keywords? Yeah, multiple keywords. <laughs> oh, um, to be honest, I'm not that much of an SEO person, but I, I generally, if, if I don't think about Google as, as running your algorithms, <coughs> but I think it's about how people will search for you. Mm. They will find phrases, right? So, yep. uh, uh, best place to drink. Now, later I'm going to go for a drink, so if anyone wants to join me, you can find the best place to drink via Google, right? And, uh, then perhaps your page should be a best place to drink. Now, if I went in and I realized that your page is about both drinks and food, I might personally think, hey, that's not as specialized as I want. Uh, I want a specialized page for drinking. Yeah, so then uh, you really need to think about how people will rank this one, not just how Google uh, uh, will rank you. Uh, so that's how I would uh, look at search pages. So if you would ask me, i say, hey, you know, if you could write more content, then why put multiple search phrases into one page? could do multiple pages and multiple contents. Content as king, write more. Okay, I think that's about all for me today. If you have yeah. any questions, you can talk later on. So, Getting a bit um, tired here. Yeah, okay, thank you, uh, Tommy. Uh, his, thank you, everyone. Uh, he's, um, he's going to be around for a bit, right? Are you going to, are you going to uh, be around? No, no, no.